my name's Annette and welcome to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm sewing verbena. Now verbena is often grown as an annual bedding plant. You see it trailing over pots in the summer and it looks absolutely wonderful. And I, I really like the deep purple trailing verbena. But the verbena that I'm growing today are pretty hardy. The ones I'm sewing today are pretty hardy. They're very hardy actually in most zones. Um, actually, I haven't looked up the zone, so do check your zone, but they are definitely hardy here in the UK in South Bucks, and I think they can tolerate a little bit more cold than that. And they are perennials, so they'll come back every year, but what I've also found with verbena is that it self-seeds readily in my garden, certainly verbena banariensis. So I'm sowing two of the hardy perennials today. So both of these perennials like the, they like the same conditions in the garden. They're sown the same way, pretty much. Actually, there is an exception, um, but uh, they're gonna grow to the same size. So what they're going to be is wonderful sort of floaty spires or lots of, um, like a mass of colour in your garden, but like at a really high sort of lofty level. And um, if they're grown on mass, like if you have quite a few plants, like I'm sowing eight of each variety today. Um, so like eight plants would be good, but even five would like make a statement. Certainly if you repeat it in your border, it's just going to look wonderful. And it, it creates this sort of glow is what I find. And I have people, I've, I've had people walk past our front gate and ask me what the plant is that's shining in the evening sun. And it's always been the verbena. So um, it is kind of eye-catching. It really makes a statement if you've got a few plants. I wouldn't advise planting just one. Um, although, you know, you could build up your stock that way, definitely. You can take cuttings, gather seed, you know, etc., etc. So if you can only start with one, then just start with one plant. So as I said, they, these are pretty tough plants. They're hardy through most winters. But what the verbena really like is a lovely sunny spot um, with free draining soil. They don't want to be sitting in like a boggy marsh or anything like that. Um, so do try and find a good spot where the ground drains freely. I have never found that I needed to water my banariensis, even in the really dry spells where we have weeks and weeks on end of you know no rain whatsoever. I've never found the need to water them. They just don't seem to droop. They seem to be so drought tolerant. What I'm going to do in the video today is um, talk a bit about the varieties that I'm sowing and then I'm going to show you how I sow them. And if you want to skip ahead to the bit where I'm sowing them, um, then I'll put a little time stamp up for you. But otherwise, uh, follow along and I'll let you know a bit about the varieties that I've chosen to sow today. The first one that I want to talk about today is called Verbena benariensis. And I've had Verbena benariensis in my garden for so many years. I, I can't tell you, I absolutely love it. And even though it self-seeds readily, I want to try my hand at growing it today but also I really want to grow it so that I can place it in particular spots where I want it to flower, um, where I need some. So even though I could transplant it from where it's self-seeded, I don't want to have to wait to see the seedlings in the ground to move it. I just want to be able to plant it out when I'm ready. So that's why I'm sowing it today. So Banariensis, um, like the other verbenas I'm sowing, really likes full sun. From seed germination to flower, it will take 90 days, so about three months. Um, you may get something a little bit sooner than that, but uh, Banariensis is kind of tricky to germinate. Don't let that put you off though, because honestly, uh, I find so many little seedlings in my garden that I just think it can't be that hard. It says that it's difficult to germinate. I've never tried it, so I'm trying it for the first time today. So it does say that it's erratic, which basically means it could take 10 days, it could take 90 days for your seed to germinate. But I reckon if I sow enough seeds, then um, some of them will germinate sooner than others, and the others I won't worry about. I'll just pay attention to the ones that germinate quickly. Apparently what the Verbena benariensis likes is alternating temperatures between 16 and 30 degrees. So you can mimic this if you've got a heat mat or a radiator by keeping it, keeping your seed tray on the heat during the day and then taking it off at night and maybe even putting it outside in a cold frame at night and then bringing it back in again the next day. And so you can mimic the alternating temperatures if you're able to do that. And I may try my hand at that, um, or I may just see whether it germinates on the mat without alternating temperatures. 
I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. So my seed packet does say that you can direct sow the seed, but I think this would only be appropriate to do if you have a long growing season. So if you've got a really short one, it's probably not going to get to flower um, in time for you to enjoy it. I mean, it's always worth a try if you have got a few spare seeds um, just to scatter them and see what happens. The other thing you can do is to pinch your seedlings in order to make a bushier plant. I have never ever pinched my verbena. Um, maybe I should try doing that, but I do sometimes cut it actually to add to flower arrangements. So that probably counts as pinching it, but I do find that it creates fairly bushy plants without any help at all. Uh, but it is one of those plants that if you pinch it, it's gonna get bushier. So the other three that I'm sowing today are all the Hastata uh, varieties and I'm growing the pink, blue and white and I'm just going to go through them um, all together because they look identical apart from the colour and you sew them exactly the same way. So the Hastata series are called Spires and they've got this kind of like candelabra form where they grow up on maybe one stem but then at the top you get these little spires of blossoms and colour um, that look a little bit like a candelabra. I suppose that's why they're described that way. Um, they're definitely more like spikes than the Benariensis. So the Benariensis has almost got what I'd call an umbellifer. Um, it's kind of got like the umbellifer form to the blossoms at the top. So it's, it's kind of a rounded, flattish shape with tiny little blooms at the top, whereas the spires, the Hastata Spires series, are much more like spikes, where they bloom from the bottom upwards, so the flowers will start popping from the bottom and then work their way up the spire. These also grow to 120 centimetres, and they like exactly the same kind of soil as the Benariensis, so they like it to be um, well-drained and fairly dry, and then they will thrive. And again, with these, you can pinch them to create bushier plants. And I think these grow to about 50 centimetres wide, presumably if you pinch them a lot. With the starter series, my seed packets also say that they're going to be erratic to germinate, um, and, but it does say that they need light to germinate, so I'm not going to cover them at all. And because these say they need light to germinate, I'm not going to cover the Benariensis either. So with the Hestata, it doesn't say that you need to alternate the temperature, it just says between 18 and 22 degrees. So I'm just going to keep these ones on the heat mat and I'm not going to take them out into the cold frame at night. Um, I think that they will do absolutely fine just staying on the heat mat. Oh, the other thing that Hastata said was that with the Hastata series, you're not supposed to water, re-water your seed tray until the seeds have germinated, which I find fascinating and also a bit scary. So I'm hoping they're gonna germinate really quickly because I feel like if the compost looks really dry, I'm just going to want to water it because that's like your natural reaction as someone who grows plants from seed and it's gonna be really hard to resist that. So watch this space, I'll definitely keep you updated. What I'm gonna do now is show you how I'm sowing the seeds. I'm just going to use my usual compost, which is the Melcourt Silver Grow Peat Free Compost. And if you want to know which one I'm talking about specifically, there is a link in the description below. It's not sponsored and it's not an ad. I do recommend this compost if you're looking for peat free compost. I have found it works really well for my um, seedlings and yeah that's all there is to it. I would never recommend a product that I didn't use myself and didn't like using. This is the Bonariensis seed, really tiny. I'm going to sow them into um, little cell trays and I'm probably, depending on how old my seed is, I may over sow. So rather than putting one seed into a cell, I may put more than one if my seed is two years old because the germination rate will fall as your seeds get older. So not every seed will germinate if your seeds are getting old. So then I'm just going to take this tray over to my other tray to get it watered. And I'm not placing vermiculite on the top this time, which may or may not be a mistake. If they take ages to germinate, then it, they'll probably get a little bit of algae on top, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and you found it interesting and useful and maybe fancy having a go at sowing some verbena. I really do think they bring lovely sort of wafty, clouds of colour, that's how I'd describe them. They're clouds of colour sort of above other plants wafting around in your border. They look really good with grasses. If you've got like a meadow prairie area in your garden, they'd look really good there. 
Um, anyway, as I said, I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please do give it a like um, and, a, you know, just give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel and I would really appreciate it. And if you want to see how these seeds and any of my other seeds do in the future, then do subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting a video hopefully next week. I'm giving you an update on all the seeds that I've sown and how everything's doing and, you know, whether I've had success or failure. I'll try to be really honest and uh, yeah show you just how everything's doing so if you're interested in finding out how everything else is doing then do give me a follow anyway thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next time today is another one of my seed sowing videos seed sowing videos <laughs> don't know why that's making me laugh seed sowing seed sowing